rolling real fast. Hopefully you're not getting dizzy. So this can add a little bit more of a flavor to what it is that we're trying to put on to our printed and viewable page. Now you notice I skipped the first one, which is the watermark. Now watermarks are great. This is where you want words or graphics to show up behind the text of your printed or even online document. So in this case, you know, we've got the history of instruments. When you click on it, you'll notice that they've got some pre-built watermarks. Now all this does is it gives a faint background image and, you know, it'll show up. Now all you need to do is go ahead and select confidential or do not copy if you want to run that you know this is good sometimes disclaimers are good especially if you're thinking well I uh, you know I, I, I don't want to, it's a sample uh, you know do not copy this is you know don't use this one because it's not a real document you know we're only we're still working on it or you might say it's urgent well maybe I think it's urgent that everybody know about your um, your particular uh, history of instruments, right? So if I click on this, watch what happens. When I click on it, you'll notice that on every page you've got this little ghosted out image that appears in the background. It's, it's underneath. And if I go down here, notice it's on every single one of those pages. Now, if you get one and maybe someone has handed it off to you and you're the final editor and you want to remove the ASAP or the draft, how do you do that? Simple. Click on watermark and remove watermark. Once you do that, boom, it's gone and it won't appear. Some people, though, say, well, you know, I noticed when you click, Chris, that you got the confidential, the disclaimers. I, I don't see any of something that I really need or want. Well, then you can do a custom watermark. Now, when you do a custom watermark, you're going to be able to save this watermark to your watermark gallery. Now, you can do a couple of things. You can do picture watermarks. So if I do that, I can say, well, let's do a uh, select the picture and we'll go to our instruments here and let's say I want to make um, you know I like these violins so I'll select the violins I click insert now what it's going to do is it say alright do you want to scale it you know 500 percent automatically so it fits on the page and do you want it to do a washout so, or not you can you know it just depends on how you want to do it now washout you'll see now I'm gonna go ahead and apply it and watch what happens let's go ahead and close you can see that it washed out you have the white here for the watermark but notice how you can barely see in the background and again watching on your video screens it might look a little bit different I apologize but here in the background you can kinda see right here the outline of the actual uh, the violins now let's go back and let's change that let's go ahead and remove that watermark and let's go ahead and add that now and we'll show you what happens when you do it with the without uh, the washout so if I select the picture come down here and I go I want violins I insert them and I don't do washout watch what happens I apply it I close and now look at that now you can see them a lot better so you can actually see more of the image in the background notice it automatically put it kinda in the center based upon the size now you can of course change that by simply going to that and uh, going to the custom watermark you know and changing that and by doing the scale where you could do it 200 percent 500 percent to you know have it fill in okay notice you can do multiple when I clicked on watermark I've already got one I can add more watermarks to this but in this case let's go ahead and remove the watermark come back here do a custom watermark and show you one more thing a text watermark with the text you can actually change the text. You can make it semi-transparent. What color do you want it? This works real well where, let's say you use gray as your background color. Uh-oh, any of your watermarks isn't going to show up because why? It's gray. So, you know, even though you're semi-transparent, it doesn't matter. Now, you can, of course, come down here and, uh, you know, choose any one of the texts that you see right here. Or, of course, you can type in a text. Hello there. You can use English. You can change, of course, to any of the other languages. So that you know, you can see ASAP in a different, uh, you know, language there. But uh, we can say uh, hello there, and we'll go ahead and have it uh, do horizontal, so we can see that gray works just fine. And we'll go ahead and click apply. We close, and look what happened. Right there in the middle, it says hello there. So you can create custom text watermarks as well. So you, you can do just about anything that you can think of 
utilizing these watermarks. So we'll go ahead and remove the watermark, and now you can see how you know that can kind of work behind the scenes. Now, one other thing that we want to show for your formatting, of course, is we kind of briefly touched on it. And remember how we separated everything into pages? Well, let's say I wanted to put page numbers at the bottom of every page. Or maybe I want to put a little logo at the top of every page. Now, of course, you can do that by adding it as a background to the page. But typically what people are going to do is they're going to add a header, which is up here at the top of a page, or a footer, which is down here at the bottom of the page. Now, the only problem with that is, in this case, notice how I, I did a page border. So that might affect it. So what I'm going to do first off is go to the page borders. I'm going to take my musical notes off and hit none and hit, hit OK and just use a line border around it instead. So that should help out. But now we need to take a look at how we can do these header and footers. Now for our headers and footers, you can do it a couple of different ways. If I come up here and I double click, it then takes me into my header and I can change my header information. If you scroll down here, I can change my footer information. Of course, I can, you know, say, well, you know, I don't I don't want to do that, so I can close my header and footer. Now, where else would I find this? Under insert. When you click insert, you'll notice that right over here, you have a header and you have a footer, and then you've got the instant one that we can do with page numbers. Now, this is pagination, the ability to add page numbers or how you number. Now, you can do that a couple of different ways. We can do it at the top of the page, and you'll notice when I do this, it gives us my, me some choices accent bars with page numbers and you know, can scroll down you can do large dots brackets you can do large italics roman numerals you can do a lot of different ways that you want to do it i like the you know accent bar which is kind of fun now this could be at the top of the page you can also do the same thing at the bottom you can put them in the page margins notice here on the left to the right or in the vertical right or left you can use a current position, which means wherever you're, uh, wherever I have my cursor here, it's going to drop that particular page number. So sometimes you want to put like on page number, blah 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 blah. You can format the page numbers by clicking on here. It says what type of number format do you want? Do you want it just standard one, two, three? Do you want it with the little dashes next to it, A, B, C, Roman numeral types? You can do that. You can include chapter numbers if you want. So it'll whatever the chapter, it'll be a heading one style, and then use a hyphen. So chapter one, page one, chapter one, you know, A. You can continue from a previous section. You can start at a certain page. I can even go and say, I'm not going to start the page numbering until page four. Usually what people do is they start on page two. So you can do that. Or you can continue from the previous section. Again, here's your section thing that comes into it. So you can include chapter number, turn those off. So this is how you can do the formatting. In my case, I can go ahead and just say, I want at the top of the page, or at the bottom, that's usually where you have page numbers, I'm going to go down here and do an accent bar. So I'm going to go ahead and do an accent bar. And you'll notice it automatically opens up into your header and footer tools. Remember, anytime we do something now in Word 2007, it automatically pops up maybe a new tab here with new tools. And it says, all right, it's going to do page one. So great. Sounds good. Now, let's go ahead and close this. And now when I do is so if I scroll down here, you'll notice it says page one. And I scroll down page two. Scroll down, page three. So it's doing what it's supposed to do. That's in my footer at the bottom. But now I want to go on here and I want to insert a header. I want to insert a header information. Now there's built in, you can do blank, alphabetize with the document title, years, or you can just go in there and say, I want to edit the header itself. Now once you edit the header, you can do some really cool things. You can add quick parts. Things like the document properties, who the author is, the company, the address, the publishing date, status, subject, title. You can get a field that will then populate from either a, a, da a outside data source. You can use your building blocks organizer, which we'll take a look at in a, another video that's coming up and show you how we can do that. Or you can get all these building blocks over here at Office Online. So there's you know different places that you can use for quick parts. You can add a picture. So if I wanted to insert a picture, maybe um, my Acme Instruments logo, you know, or maybe music. This is kind of a neat, neat, neat little one that we can do right here. I can go ahead and say, well, yeah, I want to add that music. So I go ahead and click insert, and now music shows up. So now I have that picture. And then I can format. Notice this. I've got two of my tabs open now, picture tools and header. So I can format the picture on my header and footer tools. So I'll go back to header and footer tools. And then I can say, well, after this, I want to say, you know, Acme 
instru uh, Musical Instruments Incorporated. Okay, so now I've got a little logo. If I want to use my Acme Music Instruments logo, I could. In this case, I use just my little music one. I've got this. So now watch what happens. So now I've got this at the top, kind of a little grayed out. Got my text. At the bottom, I got my page. And, you know, boom, there it is. Right there, my header. Now, what if you don't want it to appear on all these pages or, or you know, things like that? Well, again, this is where you can go back to the, uh, you know, double-click up here. And then you can say, well, I want it on different odd and even pages. So they should have different odd or a different first page. You know, I can set that up, you know, on how I want that. I can set up exactly the, uh, you know, where you want to know, you know, for the next section. Each section I set up can have a different header and footer. Wow, that's powerful. So we can change how things work. Uh, when when things go so you by the way show document text this means that if you turn this off you you only see the header and footer and so you can you know you can go in and, and, and do this so again you can insert date and time you can uh, go ahead and come up here and you know go to the footer instead so drop down here and you know make any changes you can say you want a different first page footer you want different on and even pages I mean you can make a lot of different changes here all based upon how you want this to work Okay, so it's just a good way to set up, you know, some little information that appears on each one of the pages or on the every odd page and, you know, how that works. Okay, so let's go ahead and close our header and footer. And now we've accomplished exactly what we're looking for in changing that part of our page formatting. But there's still one last thing, though, I do want to show to you, and that is how we deal with themes. Now the nice thing about themes is this really, and click on page layout, and this is where we're going to find it over here. A theme is really a combination of the colors, the fonts, the effects that you are using on a particular page. So in other words, if you change the themes, and each theme affects, you know, here's the theme colors, here's the fonts that they use, here's some of the theme effects. That are you. Now, these themes are pre-built, so you can go ahead and click on the themes and say we have our built-in themes, and you can notice that if you choose something like Opulent. Now, Opulent goes in there and it uses a palette that has kind of like purples and oranges and, and greens. Notice it changes a little bit, uh, you know, the look and feel of the backgrounds and things like that. You can go to Solstice, and then if you, you know, start changing down here under Verve, you know, it might change the default uh, settings for your fonts. Now, th this is neat because what you can do is, by default right now, you are just using the standard Office. Now, I've made some changes here, haven't I? What I can do is under themes, I can save this as a different theme. I, in other words, my colors, my fonts, if I've added any effects, I can go ahead and say, well, I'll save this current theme, and it will open up your document themes. This is in your office folder, and we're going to call this, essentially, music history theme. Okay, so that's what the file name is, and it's going to be saved as an office theme. The colors, the effects, the fonts I've saved. As soon as I click save, bada bing, bada boom, I now have that as an option. So my custom one includes this one. I can also go and get more themes on Microsoft Office Online. You know, they've actually got pre-built ones that a lot of the Office users have used. That would just open up my Office Online. You can also browse for themes. You might have, um, you know, in your work environment, a uh, place on a uh, network drive where people have saved themes that they want to use for certain documents. Your boss tells you, hey, um, we need to use the... Uh, the uh, training manual theme for this. Well, good news is you don't have to worry. You go out...